Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at another product sent in from IC Station. This time it's a little kit and uh, these kind of things are useful for basically just practicing your soldering technique and making sure that, you, uh, that you're that you getting your legs properly soldered, that there, you don't have big blobs of solder on your uh, PCBs because when you move to the smaller electronics like we're putting into the uh, RC tractors, if you're putting big blobs of solder on your uh, on your components, say your microchips, you're going to end up with uh, jumpers where you don't want them, so you're ending up with bad connections. So what we're going to do today is take a look at this little kit and put it together and just see exactly what it does, because to be honest I'm not really sure what it does, I'm guessing it's a little game, but we'll just have to put it together and find it. So let's see what's in our little bag here, we obviously have a little battery uh, case there so it's a fairly straightforward little thing presumably PCB in here single sided PCB doesn't look too bad at all our says green on one side so that's quite nice it's very clear looking we have a little diagram here to explain what we need to do And here's a list of our parts, a little bill of material. So we know what each part is and what it's named on the PCB. So we have a few electrolytic caps, plenty of resistors, and it looks like we have three transistors. Uh, yes, I think we have three transistors there. 9013, it says there. Must be the type of transistor. Yeah, it says S9013 on the transistor. So we have our various LEDs. They are probably limiting resistors mostly to limit the current on the LEDs. Transistors and the caps are probably... Actually, there will be a combination of resistor, cap and transistor, I imagine, to uh, determine what lights flash. I don't see a switch, so I think this is actually going to be some sort of a little flashing unit. So it's just going to flash the LEDs in a sequence I think so it looks like an analog sort of flashing circuit so I guess I'll just start putting it together and we'll see what it turns out like so I'll assemble it in the sequence that we have here uh, if we look at the resistors we start with the resistors so you don't need to know what uh, resistance they are because you have one 9.1k you have three 470 and you have one or no you have two 10k so you know you don't need to know what they are you can see which ones you have there so that's what we'll start with we'll start with the 9.1k it's r1 and we'll just continue like that <laughs> next thing on our list here is the three capacitors and let me see you can't actually see the list there on the screen but it's the three capacitors and again there is only three capacitors so you can't really make any mistake but you should be careful about the polarity of your capacitors so hopefully you can see that on the screen there's a white line on the capacitor here there's also one shorter leg one longer leg so the shorter leg is the negative and if we take a look at our capacitors here, we can see this one for example. Hopefully that's reasonably clear on the screen there, but there's a C3 there and you can see the little plus here. So that is where the long leg goes. The long leg is the positive. Same over here, we have C2, there is the positive. And we're C1, ah, that's right beside it, uh, there's the positive there. So the long leg is the positive. So that's where our three capacitors go. The 
Next on the list is the transistors and we can tell how they are positioned on the board by the shape of the case. So you can see it's kind of like a capital D shape. If we look at the board we also have a capital D shape drawn in the silk screen here. So all we need to do is line up the transistor so that it matches the silk screen. Well, next on our list is the battery box, but uh, I think I'll skip that because I think it'll be easier to do everything else first. But I am seeing a couple of jumpers here on the board, so I think I'll do those next. And to do the jumpers, all I'm going to use is just the legs of some of the components. So this is probably a leg from a capacitor. Going to use it because it's quite a big leg, it's a heavier leg than most of the other little components. So that's what I'm going to do bend that into shape and put it in the uh, sections here that are marked with a J. So there's J2, there's J1 in there, and that might be it. I think there's only two jumpers. So that's the next step I'm going to make. I'm going to do. I'm not going to solder the other side of that jumper in just yet because it's very close to the pin of the LED. So when I put the LED in there, then I'll solder both of them together. And you can see I've been a little bit careful here to make sure that the jumper isn't touching the legs of the resistor there. So one more jumper to do. Well, that's the two jumpers in place. We have one just there and one in between the um, capacitors and the transistor there so uh, probably if I was doing it again I would have put the jumpers in first I think uh, just it was a little bit tight getting that one in not really much difficulty doing it but uh, at the same time it would have been easier to do it before I put the capacitors on I suppose so all that's left now is to add our LEDs to the board and we just have to follow the sequence uh, of what we have here so doesn't actually say which color is which I don't think I guess it probably doesn't matter as long as you uh, keep them LED 1 to 4 the same color LED 5 to 8 the same color and LED 9 to 12 the same color as long as there are three distinct groups I don't think it'll really matter which ones go where well it doesn't matter which ones go where as long as the groups are in the right place that's all that matters I think when you're Installing the LED you need to be conscious again of the long and the short leg, the short leg being the ground. So if we look at our marking for our LEDs here, you can see there is a circle but it has a flat side on it. That side is the ground and it matches the flat surface on the side of the LED. So you put the flat surface on the LED to the flat surface on the little silk screen diagram or picture of the LED. Okay, so there's all the LEDs in place bar the one uh, it's LED 11 which I accidentally put the yellow one in and when I was taking it out I damaged the traces here so if that happens it's not a big deal to fix it uh, all you have to do is remove the silk screen from another part of the trace basically clear a pad and then you can solder it to that instead so it's not a big problem I'll just 
see if I can do it with this little screwdriver here. If I can clear a section on this pad here, for example. So that'll be one. Now this is a little bit different. I have to clear a pad here and a pad here and reconnect them because I broke the connection there. So let's just get a little bit here and a little bit on the other side. Can't see with the camera, so bear with me. Okay, so I've cleared a few little spots. We'll just put a dab of solder on those. And we'll put our, our LED in. slightly different we need to make sure we get to those pads so I'll bend the legs so that I definitely hit the little pad there and I'll solder it one at a time just to be on the safe side it's not pretty but I think it'll work we'll cut him off So next one I'm going to have to bend the leg a little bit more than normal so I definitely won't be able to do that in front of the camera. So just bear with me again. Okay so I have that bent into a shape that will hopefully work. I can't see it from behind the camera so no idea if I've soldered that. Yeah, it looks like I've got those uh, bits soldered. So we have all our LEDs in place now. The last thing we need to do is solder on our battery box. That just goes in here. There's a positive marked on the silk screen, so you just put the red light in there or the red wire in there. And that is it. We are ready to test. It's supposed to be double A batteries, but I have a bunch of triple A's, so I'm gonna have to use triple A's. Well, I don't have to, but I know the triple A's are charged. And there we go. So there you go, it's a little kind of sequenced uh, light module. And what's happening, I guess, is the capacitors are being charged and discharged, which is switching the transistors on and off which is in turn causing the capacitors to be charged and discharged so it's just a kind of a constant cycle there uh, charging and discharging those capacitors to turn on and off those LEDs so there you go that's the little kit built it's a fairly simple project but pretty good to uh, practice your soldering skills it took me about 25 minutes working around the camera so if you didn't have to work around the camera you'd probably do it a bit quicker maybe 15 minutes or thereabouts and uh, it's just good for practicing your your soldering techniques I suppose so if you uh, like that little kit you can head on over to IC station and uh, pick up one for yourself or I'd say they have uh, loads of different little kits there you could try something different maybe a little game or something and um, assemble it There's a lot of these kits kind of floating around analog uh, kits that are very simple mightn't even need a chip on them it could be just uh, true hole components like this one and all you do is solder it up and uh, it just runs away that's it so like I said it's good to have something like this to practice your soldering skills particularly if you're uh, only beginning because when you get to using smaller uh, components on PCBs like I use in the tractors and the excavators uh, it gets much more difficult to to uh, solder so if you liked that video make sure and hit the thumbs up and if you have any comments or suggestions let me know below the video and that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching.